duck for the Lakers, a team that has not lost since April the 1st. This is their first test here in the first quarter in some time. Well, they've been so dominant in the first quarter throughout the playoffs. Mark, what I thought happened in that first quarter, the Lakers came out with great energy, but I thought the fact that they have not played in 10 days, they sort of, they need that second win, and at the end of that quarter, I thought they got tired. They turned the ball over. They didn't get back on defense. Iverson got some layups. Eric Snow got one. They're right back in the game now, so it'll be interesting to see how long it takes the Lakers to get those playoff legs back. You cannot simulate in practice what you feel in the game with the energy and the emotion. Six turnovers for the Lakers in the first quarter. That's a high number for this club. Four by the Sixers. Philadelphia with a 17-5 run to end the first quarter. Lakers have led by as many as 13. Allen Iverson on fire has given the 76ers a one-point lead. So Iverson now has 14 points. He's hit six of his last nine. He has 10 points the last four minutes and 50 seconds. Now single coverage on Shaq. I tell you, it's such a tendency. When you're going to double team, you start peeking over at the basketball. And Aaron McKee, a terrific defender, turned his head. And Rick Fox comes right to the basket. And Shaq is an excellent passer. Roger Bell, one of the heroes of the Game 7 victory on Sunday, is on the floor for the first time. Robert Ory, who just checked in, able to follow that rebound. Here's Fox. Yes. Rick Fox has been on fire. He's five for six from the field. And apparently a problem with the, uh, the game clock. Did they give him a two or three on that? You know, Frank Hamlin, the one assistant for the Lakers, saying well, that was a three-point shot, so I think they now have given him a three. Phil Jackson with that little smile he has, telling Frank it's a nice job. So yeah, here's the feed right here. You can see he's well behind the line. So that's a good call by the officials. Joey Crawford, you see his eyes right down on the target there. So that's a good call. So Fox has 15 points, and we're just early. Second quarter, Lakers now lead 28, 24. Oh, oh. Iverson sets it up for the kick. Yes. And that's a two-pointer. He had a foot on the line. Five points for the key. And the Lakers lead by two. This Philadelphia team has got a lot of toughness and courage. The Lakers are going to have, this is the most competitive team they have faced in the playoffs. Shaq filling some contact. Able to go glass. Shaquille O'Neal has nine, and the Lakers are up by four. Tolo. Sweeping hook over to Kim O'Neal. Kimbe wants a few more touches in that post, coach. He said, bring it to me. I'm guarding Shaq. Make him guard me a little bit. Lakers with a 30-28 lead. And Shaq able to squeeze his way inside to draw the foul. It's on Hill, who came over to hell. Well, Phil Jackson has said that this series is going to be determined by this spot right here. Down in the post, these two big men, Shaquille O'Neal with the great footwork, a nice shot off the glass, and then Dikembe follows it up, and he has done a nice job offensively in the first three series. People felt like that maybe in this series he wouldn't be as effective against Shaq, but you still got to throw him the ball down there and make Shaq defend. Matt Geiger has come on. Joining to Kemi Matumbo on the front line. Matt Geiger's minutes have been limited coming back from that tear of the right quadricep. You know, Mark, one of the things we haven't talked about the entire playoff is Shaq's free throw shooting. They have been so dominant, it, it, it hadn't even mattered. It'd be interesting to see what happens tonight if the game is close. Would free throw shooting play into this tonight? But we have not seen it all because the Lakers have been so dominant. As a result, not seeing the, the hack of Shaq Tennessee, Roger Bell got caught in midair. And the Lakers will get it back. Phil Jackson now has a backcourt of Brian Shaw, Kobe Bryant, Robert Ory is up front with Rick Fox and Shaquille O'Neal. Roger Bell. And he'll head to the line. Roger Bell 
signed a 10-goal contract back in early April. He was playing in the CBA. Game seven against Milwaukee on Sunday. Nine minutes, four for six for the field. Ten points all in the second quarter. Kobe thought he was fouled. Mark, the strategy is very simple for Philadelphia. They are pressuring the basketball. They are making Kobe work there up the floor. They're trying to flatten out that triangle, get them further out on the floor so they can defend them and not just come down and throw the ball inside the shack to put their defense in such problems. So the pressure has hurt the Lakers here early in this game with turnovers. The Laker lead is now one. I thought they were a little shaky at the start. You mentioned the high energy, but after seeing near perfection against oh, yeah. San Antonio, it looks strange for uh, the Lakers to give up the basketball. Well, see, San Antonio didn't have the kind of speed to get out and do that. They had to play a very soft defense, and, and Kobe punished him. Well, the adjustment by Kobe Bryant, but he came up short. Good save by Matumbo. Bullet pass thrown by Iverson. Here's Iverson. The save by Iverson. A careless pass there again. Lakers turnovers. When they get themselves in trouble, they don't get shots at the basket. Iverson ah. working his way. The top of the now there's the Iverson effect. He drove and three guys came over to him. Matumbo went right to the board. Offensive rebound critical for Philadelphia. The 76 er team fighting its way back. Down by as many as 15. Shaq. Nice foul. Brian Shaw providing the one-point lead for the Lakers. When teams like to go to the offensive boards, Mark, you can run on them if you'll rebound the ball, and that's what Philadelphia has done here in this first half. Matt Geiger, who does have the good touch, able to hit the baseline jumper against O'Neal and the Sixers lead by one. Robert Ory backs to three-point territory. And <laughs> Playoff performer during the course of, of his career. Or he said the other day he will not be opting out of his contract, which is two years remaining here with the Lakers. It was a feeling he'd like to sign with Houston, his former team, his family lives in, in Houston year round. As Geiger once again, Robert Ory's wife, Kiva, gave him the okay to stay <laughs> in Los Angeles. He said, you know, those Laker championship bonus checks come in handy. <laughs> I like that. Here's Brian Shaw getting the stay. The Kimbe just does not want to leave Shaquille O'Neal, so they get him involved in a screen and roll. Shaw turns the corner. Nobody back there to give help because he's so concerned about Shaq. Iverson taking a timeout. Iverson upset. He thought, he thought he had a baseline move open, but the timeout was called from the bench. Well, Robert Ory, 9 of 34 in the playoffs. He buries this one. And Matt Geiger, a guy who has been hurt and really has not contributed much, has stepped forward and he's hit two jump shots. And Brian Shaw, a guy that has had timely baskets throughout his career. Remember last year against Portland in game seven, he drives to the basket. So the role players creating a little havoc here now in the game as the Lakers lead by two. Even when Allen Iverson misses, he creates such opportunities on the offensive board because he draws so many defensive people to him. The Kemp Bates Matumbo coming down the floor. You're going to see him right here, and he's going to get to the basket because of all the guys going over to block the shot. That's why second chance points are so vital to Philadelphia. Iverson creates two, three players coming at him, and you can see what Philadelphia does. They go right to that board. You can see Iverson has missed 10 shots. Uh, and the rebounds, the Lakers have seven, but three of the misses they have gotten back. That is critical because then he can shoot a low percentage and they can still win the game. And Iverson is right on target. He's attempted 17 shots in 17 minutes. But Tumbo able to keep it alive. Good hustle by Roger Bell. So there's two offensive rebounds on that possession, Mark. It's exactly what we're talking about. It allows the Sixers to shoot a lower percentage but get more shots. Iverson. Geiger off the fake, going glass. And that Geiger hit a couple early. 
And he's had opportunities uh, here looking to take the Laker big man outside. Here's Jack. Remember Sean Kemp on the Christmas hitting uh, yeah. outside shots, taking the Shaq outside. Very effective for Portland. Orin with the steal. And apparently that is Larry Brown's philosophy here tonight with Matt Gardner. Curry got the step rejected by Matumbo. Matumbo with the rebound. Now there's the Dikembe factor right there. They're going to be able to... That's uh, a technical foul on Phil Jackson. He felt like that Kobe was foul, but Dikembe, Mark, is an excellent help defender. He knows the defensive guidelines, and he is going to go to the front of that rim, any kind of penetration, and Kobe thought he had an easy layup. What do you mean? He's there on the baseline. It looks like he has the easy one, but uh-uh. Here comes Dikembe. The technical foul follows, and the Sixers hang it tough now, down by only two. There's no question Kobe Bryant has been affected thus far this first half by the presence of Dikembe Mutombo. Again, Dikembe knows the defensive guidelines and knows where exactly to be on the floor. He's always going to be in a help position. This is the value to his team. He just does not give up easy layups. Kobe is now one for six from the field. Impressive stat line for Dikembe Mutombo. And Doug, you get the idea that the Lakers are in a game for the first time since back game two of the series against San Antonio. You know, I said going into this series, I felt the one thing that the Lakers would find out real quickly is how much they respect Philadelphia's toughness, their energy, their ability to go through droughts, but not to give up in the game. They will keep fighting you, Marv. That's a, that's a trademark of this team. We saw it when they were down 33, Milwaukee in game six. They made a run, and Larry Brown feels like having his starters on the floor that helped them win game seven they got back into a rhythm they will not quit on the game Iverson hitting the uh, technical that follows up by shooting the three O'Neal lost it Geiger diving for it O'Neal landing on his head things getting a bit testy they'll jump it up and Joe Crawford somehow separates the two big men Starting to get a little testy oh, here. You yes. can feel the energy. The Lakers got off to a great start, and Philadelphia has fought back. So now all these loose balls being contested. You know how big the moment is when you see a ball down like that on the floor, and you get a guy like Shaq down there wrestling for it. We still have over five minutes to go in the second quarter. Looks like he's break dancing there on the top of Kiker going for that loose ball. O'Neal and Geiger. Controlled by the Lakers. Bryant, Fisher, and Shaw in a three-guard set along with O'Neal and Ori for the Lakers. Here's Ori. Matumbo reaching for the rebound. Iverson. Now McKee off the pick. Geiger. A nice little turnaround. Beautiful one. Wrist jumper by Matt Geiger. Well, he's been under fire in Philly since he's been there. He signed a big contract. He's been hurt. The Philly fans are tough. They want you to be able to get perform as we see the jump hook by Jack. But he can get himself into real good graces in the finals here if he comes out and plays well, Marv. I tell you that. I know the Philly fans well. They will embrace him if he plays well. Lakers up 40 to 39. Shaq now has 12. Geiger again gets ready. Too much room for Robert to Todd McCullough in this situation. He goes big with Dikembe. He's put a shooter in there because of the quickness of Robert Ory. McCullough could not play him, so Geiger has worked out well tonight. Philadelphia by what? Geiger's four for six for the field. Robert Ory not able to hit from downtown. Iverson pushing it. Sweeping by. This young guy will just throw himself around. And he said, you know what? I'm going to get to the free throw line. But watch him step through this space. Mark, there can't be like, what, about a foot of daylight there? And he steps through, and he knows Shaq's coming. Look at the hit that he takes. He rolls around, and he's going to go to the free throw line. But he steps right through the screener and the defender. Here comes Shaq. I think the Lakers are starting to realize that this Philadelphia team thinks they can win this game tonight. They're not here to celebrate the Lakers. They're here to beat them. 
And Larry Brown made the point that this would be the best shot. If they only take one game here at Staples, it would be here tonight with the Lakers coming off the layoff. Philadelphia still popped up with the intensive seven-game series against the Milwaukee Bucks. Sixers now lead by three. They've trailed by as many as 13. Kobe Bryant not able to find the range. Again, McCumbo on the rebound. That's rebound number 10. And a loose ball foul indicated. It's on the Lakers. It's on Ori. The game plan of Philadelphia defensively. Pressure the ball, make it tough to throw it into Shaq in the post. Make Kobe a jump shooter. Don't let him get to the basket to break down the defense. And then really get to Fisher and don't give him open shots. Marvin's been working right now perfectly as they're starting to get a rhythm about what the Lakers are wanting to do. You look back to the regular season. Snow's pass broke it up. These two clubs split the two games. Lakers winning here in early December. Kobe had 36, 22 in the uh, second half. Allen Iverson only nine for 27 in that game. And then mid-February in Philly, the Sixers won by 15 as Iverson lit up the Lakers for 40. And uh, Kobe back in his hometown of Philadelphia playing with a sore shoulder. Allen Iverson, 19 points. Kobe Bryant had a rough night guarding Iverson, scored only 18 points, had six turnovers. Turnover's a problem here thus far for Kobe Bryant in this first half. Phil Jackson taking the timeout. Allen Iverson with 19 points, eight of 19 from the field, filling up by five. And you know what is Mr. Rock and Roll. <laughs> 340 to go in this first half. The 76ers have their biggest lead of the night. They're up 45 to 40. Well, one thing we saw there, you know, Phil Jackson hates to take a timeout. He loves for his team to play through it. But he doesn't like what he sees right now. The 76ers have forced him into tough shots, turnovers. They now have the pace where they want it. And Phil wants to get this right before halftime. Derek Fisher. Iverson on the loose ball. He has McKee with the challenging Bryant. Iverson with the tip. And last touch by the 76ers. And Eric Fisher back on the floor. It's Fisher and Bryant in the backcourt. O'Neal, Grant, Fox up front. One of the things we've seen throughout the playoffs is the Lakers have owned the last three minutes of halves. So let's see if that happens tonight or Philadelphia's defense can keep them in check. O'Neal. Put the brakes on and gave back to Fisher. Here's Shaq. Drop step. Back comes Snow. Snow off the spin and then kicked it out. I think Eric is thinking now, where do I go following that move? Just under three minutes remaining in the half. A key. Yes. That was not pretty by Aaron McKee, but somehow he found Allen Iverson on that baseline. Kobe putting all kind of pressure on the ball. Aaron McKee doesn't turn it over very often. He makes simple plays. Kobe Bryant. Ah! Oh, beautiful job by, by Kobe. Tyrone Hill was looking for the rejection. That's only his second field goal. Bryant is two for eight from the field. And that's his first basket in the lane. Remember against San Antonio game one, he had 11 layups or dunks. Not tonight, that has not been the case. Against the Spurs, the lane's wide open for Kobe Bryant to operate. Iverson, rebounded by O'Neal. This crowd trying to get the Lakers going. They have been stunned here in the first half by the play of the Sixers. Shaq again getting down. They to the foul. Uh, the did everything he could. That's just a brilliant move by a, a, an amazing basketball player. The footwork, it just almost looks like Shaq puts his left arm on his shoulder to go up higher. Let's watch here on this play. It's hard to see from that angle, but he just elevates right over the top of Matumbo. Watch his left uh, arm here now, Marv, as he tries to make this move. It almost looks like he gets it on the shoulder and rides himself up to the basket uh, to get more elevation on that play. Dikembe took the punishment but got the foul. Tumbo collecting a second. Larry Brown making the substitution. Matt Geiger checks back in. Seven points, ten rebounds 
to Dikembe Mutombo. Now the reason that substitution is made is because Larry Brown knows that Dikembe will need four fouls in the second half. He does not want him to get his third going into halftime. Jack three of five from the line. He now has 15 points. And the Lakers are within two. A minute 45 remaining in the half. Iverson eluding Brown and then rejected and fouled. Kobe looking for a jump ball. The Lakers with their fourth team foul. That's the second on Kobe. Allen Iverson is going to continue to put the pressure on the defense. Looks like a good block there. But you know what? When you keep attacking, you will get calls. Kobe will get those calls, as will Shaq. It always goes to the aggressor. Kobe not happy with that. But if he continues to put the pressure on the Philly defense, he will also get to the line. Iverson an 81% free throw shooter. Eric Snow sits down. Roger Bell is, is back. You think back to earlier in this season and what was taking place between Allen Iverson and his coach, Larry Brown. At one point, Larry threatened to quit the Sixers, upset over the practice habits of Allen Iverson. Earlier this year, left the team on a, on a medical vacation. Then team president Pat Croce backed his coach, told Iverson Larry was not going anywhere. Again. The pressure defense is really bothering the Lakers. Sixers now lead 51 to 45. There's even talk of trading Iverson. Nearly happened. Both parties then bent, twisted, and things began to work out for Iverson, Brown, and the Sixers. Grant fouled by Gilger. Now remember, Allen Iverson played at Georgetown, and they pressed all over the floor. So this is something that he's been good at his entire career. He stepped right in the passing lane, almost like a defensive back, laying back there where Kobe could not see him. He lays the ball in the basket. And these are the kind of plays with Allen Iverson that make that jump shot start to go. When you make some layups, that basket gets real big. Horace Grant up the line for the first time tonight you can log on to nba.com to make your own in progress highlight reel of every game with my highlights and vote for the play of the playoffs and find out the best play for the postseason on nba at the finals backstage with Ahmad Rashad that'll be Sunday at 5 Eastern time right here on NBC it's all at nba.com coming up on a minute remaining in this first half Iverson draws the foul and the Lakers are over Foul committed by Fisher, who's had a rough first half. Allen Iverson so quick off the dribble. It looks like the Lakers want to funnel him baseline and bring the big guy over. But Shaq a little slow getting there. Fisher already had committed the foul. But again, that free throw line so vital to the 76ers. And look what this new guy has done. In the last seven court, 96 points. That is unbelievable, Mark, what this guy has done. And it all started in a 33-point blowout in game six where had Larry Brown chose to take his starters out and not play them in that kind of game. This may never have happened. That game told an awful lot about this ball club as they fought back down by, by 33. And as you mentioned, uh, Larry Brown stayed with, for the most part, his starting lineup, and they cut it back to a 10-point deficit. That may tell you more than any Sixers victory this season. I agree with that. But Kobe is working so hard. They're showing two, three different defenders that are pressuring him. That's a tough shot. Roger Brown is doing a nice job defensively against Kobe Bryant. Deflected out of bounds by Hill. Well, apparently a foul was called on Geiger. A loose ball foul on, on Matt Geiger. So the 76ers are over the foul of it. Well, you think about it. In the San Antonio series, Antonio Daniels did a nice job defensively, but Kobe had him by five inches. So he was able to get wherever he wanted to go and jump over him. In the Sacramento series, Doug Christie's a pretty good defender, but Kobe beat him with quickness and got to the basket. And in Portland, he was facing Steve Smith, who didn't have the kind of quickness. This is the first time that Kobe has played against this kind of defense that can pressure him and keep him on the perimeter. He's going to have to make some adjustments here, Marv, at halftime. Kobe Bryant coming into tonight, averaging 31 points per game in the previous 11 uh, playoff games. 
And here on the first half, just two for nine from the field. Iverson for three. Yes! Allen Iverson tearing the Lakers apart in this first half. 30 points for Iverson. <laughs> and the Sixers lead 56 48. We're down to 20 seconds in the half. Shaq lost it. Got it. Diving for it. Shaq tries to tie him up and succeeds. Now remember the Lakers going into tonight's game we're giving up 89 points a game the opponent shooting about 40 percent Shaq spins in there the ball is knocked loose and you can see the hustle by the 76ers they have taken the energy of game seven the emotional win against Milwaukee and they've brought it here tonight and right now they have the Lakers on their heels the record for most points and a half in the NBA Finals Michael Jordan 35 you know that name right I think I know him June of 92 against Portland. Shaq stealing that tap. We're down to 10 seconds left in the half. So Iverson has 30 here at halftime. Final seconds. Bryant once again played very well by Bell and forced to was able to push it in. Seven tenths of a second remaining in this first half. But for the Philadelphia 76ers, an exceptional first half in game one of these NBA Finals. Allen Iverson, 11 of 24, an extraordinary 30-point performance. And the Sixers have the lead at halftime.